So subcontracting is a process where basically we have a product, okay, which we want to consume internally or which you want to sell it to the customer. And we also have an ingredient for this product, RM1, RM2, RM3. But we don't want to produce this in-house. We don't want to produce this in-house. And we want to make sure that this product, we have a vendor who is supplying these raw materials. And we can have a multiple vendors who can supply this raw material. Then we identify a subcontractor to whom we would be giving these materials and they would be coming back to us. Okay. These raw materials will give it to the subcontractors. Okay. And they will add their services. Services means they will manufacture it. They will convert the raw materials into the semi-finished or finished good. And they will give back the product to us. And then this product will be selling it to the customer. So that is a subcontracting process. Now there is a two kind of subcontracting. First is MM subcontracting. Today we are going to talk about MM subcontracting. Second is called PP subcontracting. So in MM subcontracting, we give the raw materials and in return of the raw materials, we get another product. That is MM subcontracting. This is most more famous way to do the subcontracting. Where basically we give the raw materials and we get back the finished good. Okay, then we have a PP subcontracting. In PP subcontracting also the same thing happens, but in PP subcontracting, we have a list of operations. So let's say if you are producing a product and to produce this product, you have this operation 10, operation 20, operation 30, operation 40, operation 50. And you are saying this operation 30 in between, you are doing the subcontracting. Okay. You are not doing the subcontracting of the full product, but within the product, you are doing within the product, there is operation that operation you want to do the subcontracting. So we have a routing concept in PP, right? And under the routing, we have a confirmation control key, which can control this process that this, this operation would be a subcontracted operation. So this is PP subcontracting. PP subcontracting, we would not be discussing in today's session in detail. Uh, we have a specific PP session. Faisal would be, if you want, you can ask Faisal and he will explain in earlier batches also, he has explained the PP subcontracting. We are basically the sub, uh, the particular operation would be subcontracted. In MM subcontracted, the full product can be subcontracted, whether it's FG or SFG. In MM subcontracting, we get a better visibility that what product we are getting, what product we are dispatching. That's why it is more common approach to use MM subcontracting. Okay, we are basically straight away, we'll be having a purchase requisition, purchase orders. And with the, now here in here also the behavior of, when you say subcontracting your behavior of purchase order would be little bit similar to the production order. How it will be similar to the production order, we'll see because the bomb will come into the picture. Bill of materials will come into the picture. Okay, so the MM subcontracting is more famous than the PP subcontracting because the visibility is there. You can plan that how much material you want to go for the subcontracting, okay? And uh, what would the material you will be returning it? The more visibility is there in MM subcontracting. That's why wherever I have worked, 99% of the cases I have seen MM subcontracting. And that is the basic difference between two. MM subcontracting, we are subcontracting the full product. PP subcontracting, we are subcontracting a particular operations in the product. A quick difference between MM and PP subcontracting. <laughs>